Hi, I'm Claire Hall. And I'm Dr. Devorah Lieberman. And we're the authors of Empowered Fertility. Empowered Fertility came about um, about four years ago. Is that four, right, Devorah? Four years ago, long gestation, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it certainly was. Um, and the reason why we wrote the book is really to provide people, or women particularly, with a resource that they can take through any aspect of their fertility journey. I first met Claire, she was working on a project at the time with a pharmaceutical company and we met and talking about the differences between counseling and coaching and Claire's approach really makes so much sense to me, made sense to me then and I started sending or recommending Claire to a lot of my patients and inevitably the feedback was amazing, life-changing, don't know how I existed <laughs> without it before. Well, I think the difference being with fertility coaching, it, it's quite new. And the concept being, being a trained counsellor as well as a coach, I always like to say to people that if you imagine a spectrum of time, you've got the past, the present and the future. So coaching is fundamentally looking at the present and the future. So where are you today and where do you wish to be tomorrow? And how can you pull that reality into this moment and start working towards it? Counselling, on the other hand, is more about where are you today and what's happened in the past? I mean, it, it does sometimes reach into solution focus, but fundamentally it is more about delving into what has happened and why are you where you are. What, how, what were your experiences, Deborah, with people coming to you post-counselling? Well, I see in my, in my IVF practice, my infertility practice, a lot of highly successful, intelligent people who actually have a lot of self-insight. They know how they got to where they are and they know all of that background, but they would get stuck in moving forward and what to do next. And counseling could really only get them that far. You know, validating mm -hmm. their emotions and going through all of that was great, mm -hmm. but it kind of left them hanging and looking for that that next step mm. and so I always say to my patients it's not that Claire doesn't care about how you feel but it's not about how you feel it's about how you think about how you feel mm -hmm. which sums it up we all have the experience it's not our experience that we need to pay attention to it's our thinking of the experience and I think that is particularly those first patients that you sent to me all those years ago they were desperate to say I don't like where I am please provide the tools or assistance to get me to somewhere else and it doesn't have to be utopia it just has to be somewhere where I can manage self-manage better than where I am today and that's really how the book came to life four years later four years later <laughs> um, some of the things that I put are really important to me about the book is when, I, for, when we first sat down for that lunch and it, it sort of came to life, the key thing that I see repeatedly and I didn't realise until all these years later how important it was is the aspect that women are so hard on themselves. And when fertility knocks on their door, or infertility, infertility knocks on their door, the stress magnifies any potential um, lack of self-care or lack of self-love that they may be harboring in the background. I mean, the amount of perfectionists or, you know, control freaks, as I put my hand up for as well, um, we, we just, it's just such a um, challenging life experience to go through with all that baggage in the background. And I think feeling so, so powerless mm -hmm. and out of control and almost a victim of yes. what, your, what your body is doing or, or not doing. And a victim mentality is very common, which we address in the book as well. Victim mentality is our brain sending us false messages. And something that I really have spent a lot of time with in the book is that you are the owner of a brain. Your thoughts do not dictate who you are. And through the different processes and different tools that we have wrote, written about, it really gives you the ability to stand away and observe and witness what's really going on for you as opposed to being swept up with the victim mentality or, or not even mentality but the thoughts that are not serving you and keeping you bogged down in a in a mindset that's just exacerbating the stress mm. i think there are a, a few aspects of infertility treatment that are really quite difficult and i think the book is very helpful in addressing the first 
is the loneliness. Mm -hmm. it, it can be so isolating. And even though you might be surrounded by family and friends or people who have been through fertility treatment or not, that's their experiences. That's not your experiences and how mm -hmm. you go through it. As much as people might love you, they, they can't go through the tests and mm -hmm. they don't get their period every month and have that, that soul-destroying kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. I think also the, the loss of control. Mm. People can often control just about every other aspect of their lives. If you just work hard enough at it, you'll get there. Yeah. And then you com confront infertility, which is something that's supposed to be so easy, so natural, and it's not. And that really it, it can, be, can be quite mm. confronting. Yeah. And expectations. And expectations. I think not, not knowing what the other side's going to look like and what it's going to take to get there. Mm. And how do you manage how you go through that, that process when you don't know what the next step is going to look like? Mm. And when you're in that space, it's hard to think clearly. Our emotions just go crazy. There's actually a different part of the brain that takes over and it is hard to think logically, and if not pretty much impossible. So with the book, it is about normalizing the process. It's okay to think it's unfair. I had one client recently and she had four um, pregnancy announcements in the office, and it was only a small office, in one week. It just sent her spinning because she, it's just totally unfair. Now the brain does like fairness, so when something happens that is un, just totally um, unfair, then the thoughts that spiral from that can be jealousy. I'm jealous of this, it's not fair, why can't I wish them well? You name it, all the sort of negative thinking can spiral from that when in fact it's just a mechanic of the brain. Hmm. The book is about grounding back into these are the techniques in which you can use in order to move past the mechanics of the brain and get into your logical self, get the facts, get everything that you need so you're fully equipped, you've got a great support team behind you, and then address the emotions, then see how you feel. And that comes from more of a, like I say, grounded, but more of an intuitive place as well. Yeah, absolutely.